Hello, hi. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about enacting policies and CN Expat abilities, which is the which is the first part of your standard turn. So Nihilium's turn is the same as everybody else's in, in point A, where you enact the policy and CN Expat abilities. So let's say hypothetically that we've just um, uh, gone round again to the beginning of the second game round, and and Nihilium's managed to get a policy card and a CN Expat card. The CN Expat card is over here next to this particular military facility that's been that's been created and the CNX pat has been placed into this military facility and over here I've, I've, I need to put eight meeples in there actually so let's make let's make this look like it's actually active so one two three four five so not the hex <laughs> five six seven whoa two more seven eight let's do that okay so here we go, hypothetical situation. We've got C and Expat in here on an active hex. There's eight meeples in there, all looking awesome. They're, 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 uh, they're the, the workers, remember, and they're placed inside. And we've got our we've got our C and Expat base there. So in the order of what it says, it states, enact policies and C and Expat abilities. So we'll do the policy card first. So this policy card, if we flip it over and have a look at it, it says to us that it's called agent on the inside. It costs one policy point. A policy points are, are are not qualifiers. We have to spend a policy point in order to enact this, and we can only do it at this moment in our in our game round. And it says here for one round, you may forfeit the hex bonus of one of your CN expats, enabling you to look at any rival's hand at any time. You may sell this information to any rival. Bluffing is allowed. Shuffle back into the into the bidding deck. So it's our it's our round. So it's our turn. So we're going to go over here. We're going to spend our policy point we're on 10 policy points. We're going to spend it to nine. We're enacting this policy and we're going to say, OK, we're going to look at Civitas Tau's hand and see if there's any information in there that we might we might be able to sell to other players. So we go and have a look at CNX at the uh, at Civitas Tau's hand. Here's their hand. One policy card. We flip it over. We look at it. OK, and we discover their secret objective. We can see now that if the Civitas Nihilian player claims a chaotic victory, Civitas Tau will win instead. And then and then um, everything else is basically if we were the CM player. So we've just discovered that if we go for a chaotic victory, Tau's going to win instead. So we must now refocus our attention to not doing a chaotic victory, which is the depletion of ion from our stash. We now must look at potentially focusing on winning the game by getting to either 25 rep or 50 rep, depending on the scenario that you're playing, which is the League of Patriots scoreboard there. So, oh my goodness. Okay, so we've now figured that out. Do we want to sell that information? We could sell that information to the other player. It might be beneficial for them to know, but, you know, it might not be. It might be beneficial to them to know if we weren't the CN player, and we had this information we wanted to sell it to that other cm player and we could say you need to know this give me five eye on and i will tell you this information you need to know that if you if you cm player because we're pretending to be the other third player if you the cm player decide to go for a uh, to go for a chaotic victory and not focus on reputation you're up shit street without a paddle because guess what buddy you're not going to win so you need to sell that information because it's really really vital so anyway We've got this. We've done all of that stuff. Shuffle back into the bidding deck. So it goes back into the bidding deck. Remember, this is the bidding deck. This is the CN Expat draw pile. We shuffle. And in real life, we will shuffle and cut. And then that's it for the enact policy part of the of the of the of the turn. Now we move on to the CN Expat abilities. So it's abilities, not bonuses. So we don't get any anything for the meeple being placed here, but the meeple being placed here does count towards this particular this particular ability for this CN expat. So this is a scientist, place it into a military facility, an MF, and we can we can basically choose, we can gain three policy points per turn. We can also put it into a, into a tech facility and gain three ether per turn, but we're gonna gain three policy points per turn. So at this point, we're gonna gain three policy points. So we're enacting his power and we're gaining three policy points. So we go, okay, great, one, two, three. We go to 12 policy points, wonderful. And then we can, that's all we're doing. So we've chosen that. That's what we've chosen. Now, because we're in an MF, we can also search the bidding deck for the CTCG isolation lab and negate its shuffle back into the bidding deck rule. Fail to find the card and we'll shuffle the CNX pack back into the bidding deck. So picking number three on the next turn might cause a bit of a problem for us. We can do this though. We can go, okay, we can't be there, but we can do this. We can't move the CNX pack. 
We can't, you can't move any meeples unless they're coming out of your CRC. Once they're placed, that's it. They're there forever until you get a transport facility, a transport facility hex, then you're, then you're able to move them. But until that happens, they're situated there. So at this present moment in time, for subsequent turns in, in other game rounds, we will only be able to do number one or number three. And remember, number three is a gamble. If we can't find the CTCG isolation lab because another player has that policy card, we will have to shuffle the CNX pack back into the bidding deck, not the draw pile, the bidding deck. Okay, so that's that for that for that particular point. That's how policies are enacted. You do you basically do exactly what it says on the get on the on the card. Let's have a look at some examples here. So we've got ion bombers, for example, hunter killer drones. So here, very powerful card, costs three policy points to enact and three ions. So we must send three ion direct to the stash. So the ion goes any ion that's spent. That goes to the Nihilium player if they have that Nihilium station diffuse dump active. If they don't, it goes to the inactive stash anyway. So the three anti that this policy is placed onto this card and contributes to the attack. Oh, okay. So the three ion in this situation will stay on this card. So I'll negate what I just said about the ion policy. So it's the three ion on this policy is placed onto this card, contributes to the attack, defend or, or, or combined with additional policy action. So there are other policies in this deck like... Um, like capture scientists, uh, political hostages, stuff like that, and you'll need the hunter killer drones in order to in order to to basically make that happen. And attack any rival policy, see an expat or resource. Uh, target any rival policy, see an expat or resource, and attempt to steal it. Defend any non-orbital attack from your rival players. This policy is infinite, so it stays with you as soon as you enact it. You've spent, you've you've created it, and you've got your three your three iron on there. It's yours. And it contributes to attacks. So the ion contributes to what to what's happening with the attack. That's combat. We'll discuss combat later. So I'll keep these on here and do a combat video straight afterwards, I think. So here we go. Orbital attack ion bombers. Take a stash material cue from each rival. Conceal your target rival Civitas in your right hand and the rest of your left. Declare an attack. Okay, that's how we discuss combat. We'll get into that later. This one costs five policy points, five ion, and five ether. So very very important to remember that okay it's very important this this is an expensive card and you have to spend this to go all ion spent either goes to nihilium diffuse dumps and is halved or goes to the stash of the nihilium fuse dump isn't activated but yeah very expensive two two very expensive policy cards but great for ex for explaining combat which i'm going to do right now in another video so thank you very much i hope you enjoyed that that's in acting policies and cnx pat abilities if you have any questions let me know in the kickstarter comments or let me know in the discord or send me an email whatever you want to do i love you all goodbye